Okay then, thanks for tuning in for another Wayne's Electrical video. Uh, we've got a box there up in front of the camera, and what could be in the box? What we're going to be looking at then in this vid is what's called a photocell kit. And that basically comprises of a photocell head, uh, the socket into which it connects, and the wall mount brackets. All of that is contained in that box, complete with fixing screws and a couple of little wee wall plugs. If I turn the box around now, you can see it's got all the details on, on there of uh, what's in the box and certain details and characteristics about it. Uh, let's zoom in on it and you can have a good old look at that. There it is then. You can have a good old look at that. And uh, there we are. If you uh, wish to continue looking at that, then press the pause button now, because we're now moving on into the video. Okay then, let's get into that box and see all the parts, bits and pieces that we get in there. I do believe that the unit has been assembled into one piece, so it will be a case of disassembling it and we'll have a look at the constituent parts that are in there. As you can see, I've already opened this box up extremely carefully, and... There it is. Okay. So, that part is the head. That's where all the action happens. There's the electrical connections underneath. We should go into that in a moment or two. Uh, wall mount brackets with sockets on the top. I've got a screwdriver handy. We'll get in there, undo these two screws, have that socket out of the wall mount bracket. You need to do that anyway in order to wire it up. So, it's just a case of release the screws. And then that base comes out. Should do something like that. If it doesn't come out, you can always plug the cell back on there. Lock it into position. And then just pull it. And then it, there you go, it comes out. And you can release that. Like so. Cork seal. Okay, it's got an interesting smell to it, that is. So, there's your wall mount bracket then. Note that large hole underneath, okay? When they supply these, you, uh, they don't supply some kind of sealing gland in there to where the cable goes in. That's for a number of reasons, and that is mainly due to the fact that you can... Offer up a range of different cable management options to that. One of them being a a 20 millimeter conduit adapter. It will have basically a nut on on the inside. If I can just get a nut, so it'll look a bit like that. Uh, you put that down the inside like so. In there, something like that. There we are. And then on the outside, you would have a threaded section which would go up in there. And into that adapter, you then put in 20mm PVC conduit. Okay, that's one option. Uh, the other option is basically a cable sealing gland like this. Okay, you put that in the bottom. And uh, whiz that up, if I can do it. Something like that, anyway. I think you get the idea of what I'm uh, trying to get across here. It's just a case of trying to get that thread to bite in there. As you can see, it's a little bit tricky for me to do. It goes in there something like that. You're supposed to be able to push that down into that hexagonal part inside there. And rotate that and it locks on. But as you can see, I'm having the challenge doing that. So, it is something like that. You might have to turn the nut over, because there's a certain way around these nuts go in there. Something like that. Push it down with both of your fingers. But as you can see, your finger's now in the way of the thread, so it's a bit uh, difficult to 
hold it in there and do all that and I'll keep bumping into the camera something like that anyway you can get it in there right okay I've got it in there there we are then so as you can see I've got a cable stuffing gland on the bottom of that now you can run a flex into that and uh, wire up the terminals respectively so uh, that's the wall mounting bracket here's the uh, the socket now this socket it's got uh, a particular thing on it which has been raised in the comments box on my previous channel and if I just get the uh, lights on this at a certain angle let me just hold that like that because we want to see all of it uh, there it is you can see it on there now there's a letter N there for north okay right there and what that is for is when you're putting this socket into the wall mount bracket there's the wall mount bracket here it is what you do is you obviously get a compass you make sure that that N is facing north I don't know whether that's magnetic north or uh, that's just, that focus is just not locking on that is it manual focus then right that's on that now not the cell behind so when you install that then you put that in so it's to magnetic north and there we are that has something to do with uh, how the photo cell operates okay because when you plug this cell into the socket it only goes in one way round okay it's obviously polarity protected and uh, yes I do believe it has something to do with the light sensitive part inside the cell and obviously speaking if it's facing away from the sunrise or the sunset it will affect its accuracy and operation so when this goes into the wall mount brackets there are four ways around that can go obviously speaking north south east and west and there's the four fixing holes just to prove my point let me zoom that back out and back on autofocus then you can see in there we've got these two pins that stick up and two holes for the fixing screws and that obviously would then allow that to be placed into there uh, in one of four different orientations so that uh, you can ensure that letter N there is always facing north regardless of the wall this bracket is fixed onto wiring terminals then well we got three on this because technically speaking this is a switch but it's got electronics in it and it does need to be wired in such a fashion that it has a neutral going to it so that the electronics in there can operate let's get on the terminals then on this let me tilt that camera down a bit more that would be useful okay then bit of zoom right straight there then you can see a letter N on that and that's N for neutral so you'd put the neutral connection uh, in there I was going to say around that side but uh, no so there's the end and there's the respective hole for it there so that's your neutral one then you got L that's L for live that's your input input uh, live in there and then on this you've got LO which is uh, either live out or load, whichever way, which way you want to uh, look at it. There it is, LO. So it could be a load for there. And there's the respective uh, terminal right there. Now with these, you don't need to wear off them. So what you could do, if you haven't got any specialist flex handy, you could technically uh, run a piece of free core flex to that and then put a piece of brown sleeve in on the green and yellow uh, conductor and then redesignate it as a uh, as an outgoing live and then on the other end of the flex that you're going to run into a conduit box and that conduit box will have another one of these glands on it uh, you then obviously mark that up with a bit of brown sleeving as well to uh, designate it as a phase conductor 
and then you could uh, run a piece of standard free chord flex to that. But if you have got standard, uh, not standard flex, the like specialist flex, where it does actually have free cores and an earthing conductor, then you could, I don't think you could actually leave the earth wire in. You might have to actually snip the earth wire off in this end of things. Because when that goes in there, there's not much space in there to just leave a, a loose earth wire in there. And the end of it may go in the terminal screws and short something out when it turns on. So, if you've got like a piece of three core and earth flex, then it would be advised, if you're using that, to just cut the earth and conductor off in there. And uh, well, at the other end, you can just put a little connector strip on the end of it and leave it inside the conduit box or whatever. So I'm going to now reassemble this. I'm going to take that stuffing gland off because it doesn't really belong on there. I'll just put it on there for demonstration. And it was a bit of a fiddle getting it on there, wasn't it? So that is one of a few cable management options that you can uh, put into the bottom of this whopping weight hole. Got a cable ceiling gland. That's extra that this uh, ceiling gland does not come with the kit. You've got to purchase that as extra. So let's uh, reassemble this then. And first of all, before we put that socket in there, we want to put the cork seal in. Okay, ingress protection, of course. Okay, because if we've got look at this ceiling gland in there, there's obviously uh, a rubber seal in there to stop water going that way. But if this is at the bottom, facing down like this, and when you've got a flex going in there, you've tightened it up, it will actually act as a plug. And if that's underneath like so, and water gets in around that socket, okay, in there, uh, the whole base will just fill up with water, and it won't be able to drain out anywhere. But having said that, we do have... It's a lip that goes all the way around this, and that then overlaps on there like that, and that does provide a degree of uh, shielding so that the, the rain, even if it's being blown by wind, cannot get up underneath there into the socket and uh, cause problems. So if this was on a wall, we would orient this, we've just wired it up, we would then turn this around to the correct orientation so that the N is facing magnetic north. Okay, whichever way round that may be. I don't have a compass with me. We're not going to install it and wire it up. So this is just a demonstration. So that goes in there like so. Okay, we shall assume on this occasion that magnetic north is facing off over that way. And then putting the two screws in, we then uh, tighten those up. Like so, you don't need to apply too much force to them. Here we are then. Let's get that ceiling glowing out of the way. And as we, if we look underneath, you can see there's not much space in there to accommodate any water, uh, excess wiring, which is why I say if you're using a piece of three core and earth cable in there, you might need to actually snip the earthing conductor off. It won't be needed in this. So, once that's wired up, it will obviously be mounted to the wall. Or I suppose you could wire it up, reassemble it, and then fix it to the wall. Okay, it's nothing stopping you from doing that. But uh, once it's wired up and fixed to the wall, you then plug the head on. And this obviously goes on a certain way round, because these uh, pins, you've got two pins on here the same size, and then one of them's really large. Okay, and that's the neutral. The largest one is the neutral. Again, it's got it marked up in here. Let me get a bit of zoom on that for you. Right, you can see it says LI on this one. Live in. And LO for live out or load. And N for neutral on this one. This being the biggest one. And there we are. So before we put all this back together then, uh, let's have a look at what it says on here. It says Zodion. Uh, SS4D, and then it's got all the details on there. I will see if I can get that zoom right in on that for you. Okay, this camera's particularly good for zoom, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. Right, 
Right, if I can see that on the back of a silly little screen on the camera, you can see that on the whopping great computer screen. It says supply 220 to 240 volts, 50 hertz, and then it says rating 1000 watts. Okay, so if you've got 240 volts, 1000 watts is just under 5 amps. Okay, I don't think it says anything else on there. It probably say, says where it's made. Zodium Limited, Halifax in England. And you've got the CE logo on there. Okay, so there it is, and it's got a manufactured date stamp thing in the middle there. If I can get on it, no guarantees though. It's just pointing to a number one. Is that 08? It'll be, probably be January 08. Yeah, January 2008 this was manufactured then. Okay. So there it is. Let's uh, zoom that right out then. So there's our base once again with a socket in it. Got lined it up, plug it in there, and then to lock it, you twist it. Okay, and that basically is it. And if I tilt the camera up, I'll just show you what it looks like when it's fixed to a wall. And there you go, that's what it would look like if that was fixed to a wall, then just like that. Move it over that way a bit. There we are. So that is what it would look like if it was fixed to a wall. Nice and straight, of course, not skew with like that. So there you are. We'll just try and keep that straight on the wall for you. It's a bit difficult in welding it from uh, at the bottom, but there you are. So John SSD wall mount photo cell kit. Right there. So, I'm going to move that away before it falls on the floor. I've only got a few minutes left on the battery of the camera before it wears out. And I've got to put all that back in the box then. Oh, and there's a little bag of uh, fixing screws in it and wall plugs. There's even a little wiring diagram down the bottom there. If, uh, there we are. That's a little wiring diagram, it's down there somewhere. There it is. Right there. So there we are. Right, so I've got to uh, seriously wrap this up now because I've just got a warning on the screen to change the battery. So there we are. What we've been looking at then is a Zojon SS4D photo cell kit on Wayne's Electrical. I'd like to say thanks for tuning in and watching.